the keys to finding your soulmate. Now you have the keys. You just be looking in the wrong areas. And when you're looking in the wrong areas, this is going to put you into a position of having the wrong keys. And if you have the wrong keys, then you won't be able to get in that area. You won't be able to actually nourish. And of course, pick your Adam and Eve. Pick your fruits of labors. You're going to be eating bad fruits, bad labors. And of course, this is going to put you into a situation of biting the wrong fruit. <clears throat> what happens when you bite the wrong fruit? You bite the wrong taste buds. You start to feel unsatisfied about your current state, your situation. Of course, this plays out into relationships, desires, and all spectrums on all higher levels. And of course, we can pinpoint these things into all gratitudes and all magnitudes. So, of course, it's very important and highly important <clears throat> to make sure you're doing things that's comfortable and suitable for you. The moment you not loving something and just doing it just because you have to do it, this is going to put you into a situation of dealing with opposite perspectives. And when you're in the opposite energy, you're either going to be giving these things out or accumulating these things. And of course, you can't run away from these areas. You just have to face them. And of course, when you face your fears, face your doubts, and face your insecurities, then you can basically see where you need to release, take things apart, and put the right pieces to the puzzle. So this is going to play out onto magnitude equations. So of course, <clears throat> when we're talking about soulmates, <clears throat> 10 times out of 10, individuals always get fucked up. Know yourself, know who you are first, before you put yourself into the shoes of looking for an individual. Because this world has taught you to look outside yourself for love versus being in love with yourself. Now, when you love yourself, there's nothing outside of you that can take that away because you are in love with yourself. You know thyself. And of course, when you know yourself, you can't lose yourself and you won't neglect yourself. And of course, the only way for you to get neglected is if you don't respect yourself. And of course, if you don't respect yourself, nobody around you will respect you, feel me? You will lose that will, they will to respect you because your will is not spinning the right wheels. Feel me? When you got, when you're on the merry gown, when you're on the merry gown rail, you start to spin that shit and you go to doing that 360 on that little shit. <clears throat> if you're not spinning properly, you're going to be spinning into the wrong areas. And when you're spinning into the wrong areas, that, that means you're going to get dizzy. Because, of course, when you get dizzy and start to faint, that means things is too heavy. And, of course, you picked up too, air, too many areas of experience and too many spins. And, of course, some, life is a spin. You're always spinning. You're always rotating. So, of course, if you're not rotating to the right chakras, the right hemispheres, the motherfucker, you're going to be in a bird in the sky that gets shot down. For me, you're going you're gonna to get up. You're going to get up there one day, but you're going to come down. Of course, you don't want to come down. You want to stay balanced. For me? Now, we all going to come down regardless due to how much energy we put into an area. And of course, if you put too much energy into an area, it gets heavy. So think about it like this. If you put in the right energy to the right areas, heaviness of that is going to be experienced in your hands or through your situations and scenarios. Know that this world we live in has set up programs to get you trapped and equated to, which means that they just because you don't have a certain item or a certain materialistic manner, this is going to put you into the energies of resistant modes. But 10 times out of 10, your soulmate can be a poor person <clears throat> or your soulmate can be anybody. <clears throat> you feel me? That's when you get to the phase of loving yourself. I mean, there's levels to this shit. If, you, if you're on the right level, then you're going to find the right person for you. If you're on the wrong levels, you're going to find the right devil for you. And of course, the right shit that you're manifesting is the shit that you're basically paying attention to. Feel me? You always going to get what you deserve. And of course, the energies that you are in, you're deserving that shit because you're feeling like that. So you're going to deserve what you're basically trying to replenish. And of course, things come into your life mysteriously. So of course, if you are aware and open to all gratitudes and not seeing things in one spectrum, you will be aware of the mysterious roles that the life can basically bring you. And of course, if you are on the right treasures, the right mechanisms, you won't have no issues. <clears throat> you won't have no problems. So yeah, <clears throat> we're going to basically get into this right now. What's highly important is knowing your moon sign, because that's who you are emotionally. That's how you feel comfortable. That's how you're murdered and nurtured. Look at it like this. If you're in a situation of feeling naked inside of yourself, 
but always looking outside yourself, then that means you ain't take care of home. You ain't take care of your emotional state. So this is going to put you into an emotional, vulnerable nature. And people, places, and things are going to see this aura on you. And of course, if that aura is not situated, you're going to attract the wrong things in life. Always put your moon voice first. Always feel comfortable. Always feel safe. Always feel nurtured and cared before you put yourself out there and gravitate towards these actions. Because if you ain't taking care of your emotional state right, then you ain't fucking good. And of course, if you ain't fucking good, you ain't manifesting. If you ain't manifesting, what's going on? What's happening? <clears throat> you're manifesting the wrong shit. You're manifesting the wrong situations. And of course, if you sit in into that situation for too long, things start to accumulate dirt. Of course, you don't want to be doing that. So you got to get the Ajax, the pine saw, and make sure you grease these things up and make sure these things is clean, which means you are transforming shit. A lot of ingredients, a whole lot of things create an explosion. Of course, these shits come together and start to basically spread out. And of course, if you're not spreading out in life, they're going to fuck you up. Also, <coughs> knowing your mood sign is very important. <coughs> This is going to put you into a situation of how you feel comfortable in situations and being yourself. Now, know your, know your mate moon sign too. And the reason why we're using the stars is because the stars is going to help you see your ups and downs, see your downs and falls, which means you can go, you can get deeply rooted in certain areas or you can basically be good at, good at certain things in certain areas. So if you're aware of these things, if you're aware of your, um, your star alignments, you'll be right. Feel me? That's why astrology is important. The stars are important. You are a star. Feel me? And of course, you was born in a certain area, in a certain space and location. So these areas is going to pretty much play out into your personal world. And of course, when you bring your personal world with the gratitude of the world, you got to make adjustments. And you, uh, the world got to make adjustments for you, whether good or bad, depending on how you carry in your attributes and your characteristics. Now, what's also important is your rising sign. Your sun sign, we already know your sun sign. That's how you're seen. Your moon, we don't know these things unless you basically infiltrate these things to your sun and your ascendant. Now, your ascendant is your rise of your personality. And of course, this is the area. This is the space. This is the location. These are the houses, the habitats where you're going to find your soulmate at. Now, what's mostly important about this perspective is you got to know what time you was born. So, get your goddamn birth, calf astrology. I mean... Yeah, calf astrology, you could basically use these websites, certain websites. But most importantly, if you don't have your birth certificate, you need to go online, order this shit, and of course, get this remifactured <clears throat> so it can be delivered to your house. <clears throat> but yeah, most importantly, knowing what time you was born is very highly important. If you know the AM, then the PM, it's cool. But knowing what time you was born, it's highly, this is what's going to help you to pretty much put you into the area and location of these things now let's break down the houses real fast now in the first house is selfishness you you come first you put yourself first the second house is possessions and how you can basically bring gifts and talents to the world which is things you value it ain't just always pertaining to money <clears throat> you can be good at multiple things but that's the chart to look at that's the chart to build at if you're pretty much predicated towards that also if you have in the third house the third house is what's on the left side, the right side, and your surroundings, pretty much your environment and how you dictate that, which is areas of short travels, areas in your location where you live at, and of course, places that you are accumulated and familiar with. Now, if you have your fourth house, this is your home, your privacy, your space, your comfortability, your mother, your nurturing, and of course, this is your um, spaceship, which means this is the areas where you create space and ship, and sell, dream. Feel comfortable, travel, expand, learn. Because of course, Jupiter is exalted into this house and Neptune. Jupiter experiences Neptune, dreams, imaginations, fantasies, and of course, it's all accumulated into one. Also, if you have the fifth house, this is your creativity, your expressions, your hobbies, and of course, what you give attention to and how you receive attention. Your sixth house is pretty much predicated towards your daily routines, what you do every day, what do you do on a day to day basis, your health, your organizations. How you can help others, <clears throat> how you can help yourself, play down to that magnitude. Seventh house would be your relationships, your partnerships, and how you relate to the world. Eighth house would be deep desires, behind the scenes, closed doors, occult, eyes, for me, lights out. Oh, shit. Well, you can't expose everything to the motherfucking belt. Ninth house would basically be your experiences, for me. Your experiences would be predicated towards... Oh, yeah, you just, just realize that shit. Eighth house. They don't like being exposed in the dark, so that's why that took place. Just fucking fell on the fucking floor. 
Of course, name files is experiences, wisdom, knowledge, and of course, yeah, details, meanings. And of course, 10 files will be your status, your career, and your business, and of course, what you're known for. Popularity. Because Mars is exalted here. Also, sun, the sun is exalted in Mars. The 11th house will be your public. Being in the unknown, the unfamiliar. Because, <clears throat> of course, everything is being discovered every day. Unfamiliar things. Unknown things. Behind the scenes things. Mysticism, occult. Now, also, 12th house will be your dreams, your imaginations, and, of course, your illusions. And, of course, 7th house is exalted here. And, of course, the 7th house is the chart where you want to basically use where you, this space, that's the space where you're going to find your relationships and how you relate more into areas. And of course, it's your opposite sign. Either you're going to be giving off the opposite energies to receive the opposite energies or the opposite energies is going to come in your way for you to basically give it out. And of course, when things is giving out and giving in, that means it's having sex and it's fucking. So pretty much in this perspective and this mechanism, if you have the seventh house, we're going to break it down like this. If you have the seventh house and the first house, and also, this plays out into mechanisms of your moon sign, too. Your Venus could be either a, a learning process, a conjunction, where you can over and overdo things. Tron, which is a gift. You can get lazy in love matters. Sextile, which is your opportunities where you can act on love matters. And, of course, the um the, the opposition would be opposites, attract, giving off and take. And you always seem opposite. Or giving off opposite energies or odds or being at odds in situations. Now, playing into this mechanism, <clears throat> we're going to break it down. Say if you have the seventh house and the first house, that means this is going to pretty much mean that you're a Libra ascendant. That's how it's going to play out. So if you have the seventh house and the first house, that means your soulmate, the keys to having your soulmate is being yourself. You got to be selfish, you do things in your own manner, and of course, Express this and relate this to the world. And this is how you're going to attract your soulmates due to your personality. Now, if you have the seventh house and the second house, valuing secrets, valuing desires, behind the scenes, things that you're valuing, whether it's a person, place, thing, money, or whatever, possessions, this is how you're going to attract your soulmate by valuing that and relating that to the world. And of course, by relating it, you relating your values, things that you value, things that you love. And of course, that's how you're going to attract them. Also, if you have this in the third house, you're going to be pretty much need to relate to your surroundings. Do things in your surroundings. Relate more to your surroundings. So be aware of your surroundings. That's where your soulmate is going to be. If you have this in your fourth house, <clears throat> you're going to relate to your home, privacy, things that you're doing. Relate this to the public. Or it may be a situation where somebody might come to your house or you may find somebody in your home space, your home area. For me, which means you don't have to look hard or look further. Fifth house will be your creativity, your hobby, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, how you give attention and receive attention. That's what that's going to be. The sixth house will be things that you do on a day-to-day -day routine basis, health, fucking vegan or whatever. Broadcast that shit. The seventh house will be relationships, partnerships, and how you communicate and interact with individuals on a day-to-day -day basis. And whoever you relate to, relate this more. And of course, whoever you have relationships with, for me, you just might be a relationship. You might be a, um, what you call it? You might be a high head. You might be impulsive when it comes to relationships. Well, whatever you, whoever you relate to, or how you how you feel comfortable relating to this person, broadcast that. Eighth house will be dark, deep, deep secrets, and of course, desires. So you might get get your partner through a cheating relationship or some shit, or some sex or some shit. Ninth house will be experiences, traveling, going above your country, leaving your country, leaving the world. Tenth house will be your status, your career, your business. Of course, you may go to the extreme. So that means you got to go to the extreme, but have an equilibrium and balance when this perspective plays out. Also, seven, the eleventh house will be the public. So get your ass in the public. Get your ass to the unknown. Get unknown. Get to the unknown comfortability, unknown areas, and shit. That's where you're gonna find your soulmate at. And of course, last but not least, you gotta pretty much fantasize and of course use your imagination, dreams, illusions to create your own soulmate. And of course, the more you do this, you can manifest this into your situation. For me, either you're gonna dream about it, you're gonna dream about your soulmate in this area, or you may have to meditate on it. For me. But of course, you got to get very creative in these areas. You, know, you really got to use some form of creativity to blend in these energies. So yeah, that'll be how that play out. And of course, that's how you find your soulmate. Feel me? But your moon sign is more important. And your Venus is going to pretty much play out into that energy. So, so you can have a square where you got to learn how to compromise and love when it comes to relationships and shit like that. But wherever you have your house at, 
and your rising sign. These are the areas where you're going to find your soulmate. And of course, these are the areas where you're going to pretty much feel more nourishment. So 10 times out of 10, you may be looking for your soulmate and it ain't, it won't be Facebook, it won't be YouTube, it won't be Instagram 10 times out of 10. It can be that if you pretty much predicate it onto that. But of course, being in the area and the space to accumulate these things, you got to go by your rising.